It wasn't just a spoonful of sugar that nearly killed Glenda Ford. Diabetic symptoms crept up on her until a nurse finally tested her blood sugar. He tells the nurse to take my fasting blood sugar. And when she read it, she screamed. She said, ah, oh, it's 451. But, you know, I still don't know what 451 means in the scope of things. And at that point, I started crying. I was like, oh, no. You know, because all these voices kept saying, oh, you're catching it early. You're going to be on pills. They're going to control it by diet. And here I was, it was so severe that all of a sudden, I'm on insulin. I'm like, I can't take this. This is the one I screamed at. I didn't think I could ever do this, but... I had to do a finger prick on my finger five times a day. So all of a sudden, I flipped and I entered a new world. I am, was now diabetic. Before that, Glenda never gave diabetes a second thought. Heart surgeon and television host Dr. Met Oz says too many of us think that. Because we tend to treat it like it's a little sugar, right? It's not a big deal. A lot of people have diabetes. What's the problem with a little sugar in your blood? So diabetes is not just a little sugar. Diabetes is like a, a, a serpent inside your body, eating away at you, rusting away the tubes of your body. If you don't think of it in those aggressive terms, uh, that, that should scare you a little bit, you won't take it seriously, which is what we have to start doing in America. And Dr. Oz created an eye-popping animation explaining just how diabetes can rip through our arteries and kill. When you eat a food, especially if it's a simple carbohydrate, it goes into your stomach, and here's the image of your stomach with the liver right above it, and the gallbladder is that green structure. The food passes into the small bowel, and it mixes with bile, which acts like a soap to wash the food, allowing you to absorb it more readily across the wall of the intestine. It goes up into the portal vein towards the liver and gets into the bloodstream. Here in the bloodstream, you've got red cells, and those yellow things are pieces of insulin. They've been stimulated by the pancreas and released. Now, the nutrients that we take in can come in many forms. The blue dots here are sugar. If you have the normal metabolism, insulin takes that sugar out of your bloodstream. But if you get obesity, especially belly obesity, you see her getting larger, the insulin no longer works the way it's supposed to. Your body gets resistant to it. The sugar builds up and starts to affect major vessels like in the heart. Here's the major blood vessel in the front of the heart, and that little plaque starts when you're a young person, but that plaque gets larger and larger and gets irritable, especially when you have lots of sugar hanging around like in diabetes, when one day, all of a sudden, boom, it just ruptured. When that ruptured plaque occurs, the body wants to heal it. It does it with those purplish platelets. It has fibrinogen in that sticks to it, and we form a blood clot over an open sore in the blood vessel, and then kaboom, right there, you saw the leading cause of death. When Glenda discovered a lousy diet and virtually no exercise was killing her, she changed Three, everything. Two, Keeping still almost killed me. So I move a lot now. I'm constantly on the go. If I had my grandkids, we're going for a walk. We're going um, a mile walk, and we're walking down to the playground. We're walking back. We're walking to the mall. We're walking back. And relearning how to eat was Glenda's biggest challenge. Carb counting, starch sleuthing, blood, sight, and urine testing. Linda's new life now comes with a daily pre-flight checklist. Before it was salad with everything on it and thinking, because this is not fat food, I'm doing real good. In the beginning, people are often confused and overwhelmed because there's a lot to learn about diabetes. And the first step towards healthy eating is to getting them to do the healthy plate. It's likely Glenda's new life would get the Dr. Oz seal of approval. One of the scariest things about diabetes and pre-diabetes is you'll have it for a long time before it will start to show it and rear its ugly head. You won't realize you've got complications related to it until you're exhausted all the time, until you can't see so well, until you can't sleep well, until you're urinating continually. Those things tend to remind you that you've got a problem, but if you don't pay attention to those items, like why you're exhausted, you won't diagnose it in a timely fashion. So by the time I, as a heart surgeon, diagnose you, I'm taking you to the operating room. I'm going to take a bandsaw through your chest. It's a little late in the game to figure it out. So Glenda's working with a nutritionist, her doctors, taking insulin, cooking right, moving, and she's telling her children to get tested very young, something Dr. Oz wishes we'd all do. Every American by age 20 ought to know what their blood sugar is uh, while they're fasting, which means after not having eaten over the evening, what does your blood sugar sort of stabilize out at? Certainly by age 35, it ought to be rechecked. If you're overweight, and by that I mean specifically having a waist size more than half your height, uh, or if you have any other complications potentially related to heart disease like high blood pressure, uh, elevated cholesterol, you must know your blood sugar numbers. For Glenda, that diabetes wake-up call came nearly too late, and she wants to help others learn how to prevent or control it. I keep thinking if it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody, and it's not anything to joke with. It's, it's serious, so 
I've definitely changed. I'm not the same person I was before I was diagnosed. I never will be that person again. In Baltimore, Maryland, I'm Andy Field for my generation.